previous episode, I showed you how to use Fade to create a real-time WebSocket between a subscriber and a publisher. So today we're going to look at the back-end service for actually getting Fade up and running and securing it with a SSL certificate. The first thing that you need to do with your Linux machine is install Git. To give you some background on my environment, I am using RVM for my Ruby version manager. However, this process will work slightly modified for System Ruby or other versions of Ruby managers. So here you can see that I am using Ruby 2.3.0 and I do have Ruby installed as a user that I'm logged in as, not under root, and it is installed using RVM. Next, we'll want to install the face simple that I had uploaded from a previous episode. All you have to do is git clone and then the URL, I'll post it in the show notes. And then this will now be in our home directory. We then want to move the face symbol directory to under opt fay. I like to do this because this opt directory is where I like to install the unbuttle packages, each in their own subdirectory. So in our case, it will be fay. We can then navigate to our opt fay folder and then install bundler. I do have a fresh version of Ruby, so I've not installed any dependencies or anything. It is a clean install. We can then call bundle on our project. Even though Thin was installed, if we look under our RVM gems Ruby directory and in the wrappers, we do not see the Thin executable. So what we're going to have to do is install Thin as well. If we look back in there, we now see the wrapper. Don't forget to edit the config.ru file and change the secret to something that you'll remember, something that you'll take note of, because otherwise everything would be set up correctly, however it would just seem like it didn't work. We can then start up our thin server on port 8080 and test it out. So you now see that we are connected live to our thin server. However, what we need to do and what we want to do is secure this over a SSL, because if our application will be served over SSL, we need our WebSockets to be served over SSL as well. Otherwise, our web browser may block that WebSocket connection, and therefore you would not be able to get the real-time notifications. We then want to install Thin. So I'm going to use RVM sudo because I use the RVM package manager to install Thin. However, if you are using the system Ruby, you should just be able to call sudo thin install. But let's take a note that it is installing it under the etc slash thin directory. And then also, depending on your system, run one of these commands. And this will make sure that thin starts up whenever you reboot your computer. We can then create a thin.yaml file in our etc thin directory. And then paste in the following. And this may be different for your environment, so do take note of the first three settings at least. So you may want to change the port that you're going to run thin on and then also the user and group that then will run as. And there is a modification that we have to do to the thin service that we installed earlier. So edit slash etc init d thin. And on line 16, you'll want to erase this slash bin and replace it with wrappers. Close the file and save it. We can then call sudo service then start. You'll see that then is now started as a service. If we go back to our web browser and refresh the page, You'll see that it still works. We'll now create a directory SSL under our Fay folder. And you'll want to be issued a SSL certificate from your favorite certificate authority. In this case, I'll just create a self-signed certificate. We then want to go back to our thin.yaml file and edit it. At the end, we'll want to enable SSL, and because I'm using a self-signed certificate, I'm going to disable the verify. However, you may want to keep this set to false if you are using a trusted certificate. Once you have the file saved and closed, we can then call sudo service then restart. It'll stop the application and it'll restart it. Make sure that whenever you make a change to your thin.yaml file, you make sure that you also restart the thin service. In this case, you'll see that I got an error message where I cannot write to the PID folder, which that's a fairly simple fix. If we just take a look at the permissions, you'll see that the PID folder is belonging to the root instead of our local user. So I can just call chownwsws because that's my user and group, and then call this to the PIDs. I will have to call sudo on that. And then I can also do the same for the log directory. Back in our browser, if you were to refresh, you'll see that it no longer works under just a standard HTTP. 
However, if we load it under HTTPS, you'll see that it works still. I am getting a certificate error because it is a self-signed certificate and it's not a trusted one. And then back in our Rails application, we can create another key in our secrets.yaml file and we can call this just fay URL. And notice that at the end of this, I'm not calling slash fay.js, I'm just keeping the slash fay. And then in our body pack, I'm gonna pass in a data attribute fay and then I'm going to send in this fay URL. I do this because within our application.js, I don't want to have to keep in mind that this is statically set. Instead, I want to make a check to see if that data attribute exists, then we'll load our necessary fade dependencies here. So back in the application file, we also want to change the JavaScript include tag to the fay URL that we set in our secrets. However, within our JavaScript include tag, do take note that we are calling slash fay.js here. And then in our application.js file, I'm setting the fay underscore URL variable to the data attribute fay that we set in our body. I'm then calling the fay client to that reference URL. So if it does exist, then it will execute the below code Otherwise, it will not include this, which would have led to a JavaScript error. Finally, in our application helper, in the broadcast message method, you'll also want to replace the static URL here with the fay URL from our secrets.yaml file. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.